Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Thank y'all for participating in our weekly Tuesday night um, biz coaching and networking. We know since COVID-19 has hit, uh, we don't have to stop building. We don't have to stop networking. We can continue to build across state lines, right? And matter of fact, uh, even beyond, last night I had a wonderful call with an uh, entrepreneur in Australia, and we used the Zoom platform, and we're going to start building and networking. So I highly encourage everyone, even though we are in this uh, awkward moment in time, utilize the time we have to continue to build healthy relationships. And what I want to do right now is give an opportunity um, for individuals, again, to introduce themselves, what state you're from, um, and a little bit about your program, and then we will have Miss Jovan, and I'll do an intro before we have her to speak. So, um, Miss Kelly, feel free to share a little bit about yourself and your organization. Um, good evening. Um, I'm Kelly. I live in the Baltimore area, and um, I'm trying to start a program with a friend who we're both Baltimore City School employees. And so we want to create a program where we can um, teach children about skills that they don't really get traditionally in school, um, home economics, gardening, uh, also dealing with um, mental health and mentoring and tutoring. Mm -hmm. Powerful, powerful, absolutely powerful. And we will have some room um, after uh, Dr. Jovan Jackson speak for us to do a little bit of networking as well. Also, as we go throughout this whole evening, feel free to drop your website, email, social media contacts so we can actually network even off of this platform. So as we progress throughout this evening, feel free to do that. Uh, next, we're gonna flow over to Mr. Brian. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, Brian Cooper organization is Charlotte's Web Enrichment Center. We have a couple of different programs. Primarily right now, we're focusing on our youth program. We have a youth and boxing mentoring program uh, that we run out of Hydesville, Maryland. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And even as you finish introducing yourself, feel free if you want to drop your contact information to network. Okay. Next, we're going to go over to Mr. Mayo. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mayo Best. I am a business consultant and a digital transformation consultant as well, actually. Um, and pretty much I'm helping folks right now um, to be able to transition from what they're doing now to current jobs, as well as small businesses to start making some of the mental shifts, as well as some of the business plays in terms of positioning themselves for what they need to do for a lot of things that are coming down the pipe economically, as well as what you need to be doing um, for your business, both mentally, what your mindset needs to be, and some of the positioning that you're going to need to start considering uh, for the near future. Absolutely powerful. Don't forget to drop your contact information. Yes, uh, contact information. My telephone number is 301-281-5789. And you can reach me at Coach Me MB. That's Coach C-O-A-C-H-M-E-M-B at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. Now we're gonna flow over to Virginia, uh, Joshua. Hey everybody, how you doing? Um, my name is Joshua Bono. I'm with a, a Higher Purpose. I'm the uh, CEO and founder of A Higher Purpose. We are a platform that uh, promotes, educates, and empowers entrepreneurs to live a life of purpose and uh, and well-being. Um, I guess you could uh, just, we, we're fresh. We just got our uh, 501c3. So, you know, it's, I'm grateful to be here and to, to learn about everything that, you know, um, this world has to offer. So uh, thank you. And you can find me on IG right now at A Higher Purpose. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you uh, for sharing great works coming out of your organization. Mr. Philip. Hello. How are you? I'm Philip Neely. Good, how are you? I'm great. Best day of my life. All right, you all, I'm a retired law enforcement officer, 25 years in the Atlanta area, uh, now current professor of criminal justice. I'm looking at developing a youth uh, mentoring program for young black males here in the city. Awesome, that's powerful. And what, what region again? I'm in the Atlanta area. Atlanta. Yes, okay. I live in yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, powerful, powerful works is gonna come out of your organization. 
Now we're going to keep it moving. Miss Courtney. I'm sorry. I had to turn the thing on. Um, I'm Courtney Ward with the Pink House Group. We are a 501c3. Um, we basically focus on pregnant teens, teens whose parents are incarcerated and teens who have parents that are deceased. Um, our main focus with them is prenatal care, mental health, financial mobility, and job readiness. And we also are acting as housing advocates for them as well. So um, you can check out our web, our webpage at the Pink House Organization, excuse me, the Pink House Group org, and um, let us know what you think. Absolutely, an awesome organization. I had an opportunity to work with uh, Miss Courtney and her entire team, everyone that's a part of the team. Phenomenal works that they're doing. I uh, know we're going to keep the train moving. Um, we have someone on an iPhone. Would you like to introduce yourself? It just says iPhone. Hi, my name is Latonya Brooks. Um, I work for Kelly Hope. Uh, we don't have a name for our business right now. Mm -hmm. We're trying to develop something that we can um, work with young people with the whole, um, with the, um, as, as far as um, fitness, I'm sorry, fitness, mm -hmm. um, Dealing with, um, I'm sorry, I just can't. Uh, um, okay, fitness, that's an awesome thing. We all need to be thinking about physical fitness. Yeah, about mentoring, tutoring um, with the fine arts, mm -hmm. and also um, home economics. Mm, powerful, powerful. Thank you so much for sharing. And what's your name again? Latonya Brooks. Miss Latonya, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, I don't want to overlook anyone. Is there anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? Oh, Mr. Martin, I see you on. Would you like to share? Hi, hi. Um, yeah, I just uh, got out of a, a meeting kind of late and trying to catch you guys on here. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yes, um, um, I'm Martin Gilbert, um, owner of Gilbert Enterprise LLC in District Heights, Maryland. Um, we uh, provide electrical, HVAC, and uh, electronic um, door entry uh, uh, systems installation. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just uh, trying to network with, you know, other companies. Um, again, thanks for, you know, uh, keeping me up to date and uh, giving me the opportunity to be a part of this networking uh, that you guys have. I really do appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. We're going to make sure we get everybody's contact information and share. Uh, did I overlook anyone that would like to introduce themselves before I introduce the speaker? No? Okay. We are about to, um, you know, change tracks just a little bit. I, I had an opportunity of meeting Dr. Jovan Jackson many years ago. It was such a pleasure and an honor of meeting her, a woman of integrity, authentic. Um, and, you know, I've learned a lot from her over the years. And so I, you know, spoke with her recently and asked her if she could come on our platform on this evening. Um, and I'm, I'm gracious that she's been able to do so. So I'm just going to read a little snippet about her. Um, we welcome everyone um, that's joining us, um, and we will open back up towards the end for anyone that's just joining uh, to introduce himself in network. So it's a little bit about Dr. Jovan Jackson. Dr. Jovan Jackson wrote a book, You Be the Bank, Finance Yourself to Wealth, and the workbook Companion in 2016, a self-help financial book that teaches 100 plus secrets of strategy around wealth. We all need that right now. And I know we see a lot of what's going on in our economy. Um, her website is youbethebankbooks.com. And I also believe newly released is also a um, financial planner. And so one of the things I think we all need to do, not only partaking in what's gonna be shared on tonight, but utilizing these tips and tools that can be shared every day in our everyday life with our business and personal finances. At this time, without further ado, Dr. Jovan Jackson. 
Good evening, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Also, I just forgot to say one thing. If everyone could just hit the mute button, that way we won't have any background noise as she's sharing. Once she concludes, we're gonna open it back up for mix and mingle virtually and network um, with each other. You have the floor. Awesome. Thank you so much, Catherine. I am honored to be able to grace your platform. I, I know after personally working with you personally myself and hiring you to do some work for me years ago, you have been, you, back then you were professional and you're even better now. And so I'm just always, anytime you call on me, I'm always answered because I know you are always been about business. And uh, so I definitely appreciate this invitation and to all of those who are out there uh, on the Zoom. Good evening, good evening to all of you. Um, I, I send my warm wishes and pray that you guys are being safe and using wisdom as Catherine stated earlier in the, um, in the broadcast as we navigate this climate that we are currently in. Well, I only have a limited amount of time, so I want to go ahead and jump right on in. Um, one thing I did notice as I listened to all of the uh, introductions. One thing I noticed about everybody who's on here is that many of you uh, uh, have a, a big passion for the youth, passion for the youth, mentorship, and uh, the children, and I definitely honor you all for that passion, and I speak continual blessings as we know that our younger community needs all the mentoring and coaching. And I took notes about everything that everybody's doing. So uh, hopefully I do want to know with, where Courtney is located. Uh, put your location there and uh, in there. And of course, make sure you guys drop some additional, but I was able to capture notes on everybody. And I just love what you're all are doing, especially uh, the one uh, I think that's Courtney dealing with the pregnant teens um, and things like that, as well as I believe Um, Jovan, Jovan, really interested. You going? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit going in and out. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, I was moving around a little bit. Is this better? When, you, when your frontal is clear. When I'm front. Okay. All right. I was looking at my little notes that I had taken down about some of the guests who are on in their businesses. Is this okay now? Perfect. Okay. All right. Perfect. So I can't wait to further connect with each and every one of you because I can hear, I love the, the mission and the vision that you guys are doing with your business. And I'm looking forward to further connecting with each and every one of you. So let me jump on in. Today's topic is you be the bank, finance yourself so well. And just a little bit about me uh, as Catherine already went through. Let me make this big. So can you guys see my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. All right. Let me do it. Make it big so you can see it there. Just a little about me here. Who is Dr. Javon Walker Jackson? I am first and foremost, I am a woman of faith. Um, I follow Christ and um, I'm, I'm not ashamed about it. And I love to let people know that. Um, that's my uh, rule of standard of living and I try to live by those principles. I'm also a wife and a mom. You can see my lovely family over here to the right. I have a 15 month old right now as well as a 10 month year, a 10 year old uh, daughter. And so you can imagine that my house is pretty busy nowadays uh, while I became a homeschool teacher somewhat. Uh, so you know what that's probably like over here. I'm also an entrepreneur of almost 15 years, going on 15 years, no paycheck for the past almost 15 years. Strictly hustle and grinding, just like many of you are or will uh, start in your journey. I heard some of you are starting your business. So um, I definitely know where you are, been there, done that. And typically I work with women who are nearing the end of their working careers, who have the challenges of organizing and strategizing how to get the most bang for their buck. So I assist them in creating a plan to show them how to maximize their current resources and their income. So that they can sustain their quality of life once they stop working. I also specialize in a concept called You Be The Bank or private equity funding, which is for people who have at least 10 years before you retire, who are also concerned with lowering their tax liability after they stop working. And so I show them how to uh, create a tax-free plan and how to be their own bank so they can finance themselves to wealth on their way to uh, their journey of 
stopping working after 30 and 40 years. And so um, I'm also an author, as Catherine alluded to. I have my books here, You Be the Bank. In fact, what I'm going to share with you all tonight is actually from my books. It's a book here I wrote in 2014 and then the workbook companion to go with it in 2016. And pretty much it's about showing you a hundred plus year concept that pretty much the wealthy have been using for years. And I'll share more about that, about that on how they create wealth, turn the tables on their creditors and not have to uh, go to Toyota and Bank of America. They allow that power of compound interest to work in their favor. And so I'll touch a little bit about some of the aspects that is written in this book shortly. And then I'm a survivor, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. Lastly, a teacher, mentor, and friend, and all of that, I have a mission to pretty much teach harmonic living, okay, to as many families as possible to become financially independent and build safe and secure retirements and legacies for generations. I have a personal mission. My personal mission is just to live a life of significance and impact and earn as many heavenly crowns as possible. And so I promise to you today that one thing I recognize in listening to you all's introductions is that you guys and the fact that you're even here is that you're obviously very serious about being the bank and securing your financial future. And I, I definitely want to acknowledge each and every one of you for that. Most people never really take the time uh, to educate themselves on the way that you guys are doing right now. Out of all the Zooms that's going on out there in social media land, you guys are tuned into this one and made the commitment to do this today. And so that's that's why I know that my time is, is being spent very well. I'm talking to the right people. And this live is especially designed for people like you who want to operate as the bank so that they can create that tax-free lifestyle and income and enjoy the same or better quality once you do decide to stop working. And so here's my free gift to you, uh, just for you taking the time and spending a few minutes with me. I want to, because I don't have a lot of time today to really dig into the nuts and bolts of this concept, I want to offer the first chapter of my book to you absolutely free, no cost, just for sticking around with us to the end. I'm going to provide you with a way that you can download this uh, chapter, and then you'll really be able to really get a better understanding, especially from a foundational perspective of what we're talking about tonight okay and then um you might be saying okay well you know why why am i here um uh, uh, first of all i mentioned to you that i'm a survivor and just a little bit more about my story um so prior to when i say i survived I'm referring to, I survived every type of financial devastation that most people can even think about. Um, prior to 2008, I was a victim of the real estate bust back in 2008. And of course, what happened to me during that time is that I had a lot of my assets, up to 80% of my assets tied up in real estate and that never actually turned over. And so of course that caused or that triggered a downward cycle of financial devastation, foreclosures, I had to give back properties, um, uh, uh, repossessions, bankruptcies, all of these things started happening. And of course, I was also married at the time and being a young entrepreneur, new in the business, I was just hustling and grinding, running all across the country, doing great things from a business perspective. But of course, I was ne neglecting my marriage too. And so my marriage ended up in, in divorce. And so I remember uh, back in about 2009, I was pregnant. Um, my husband and I had separated and I was sitting in my grandmother's bed and uh, on Christmas Eve, and I had grabbed a book that a friend had given to me, a business partner from a financial company we were both affiliated with, and she gave me this book called Tax-Free Retirement by a guy named Patrick Kelly, and I said, I must have said I would read this over the holiday, so I grabbed the book and was reading it, and I remember just getting disgusted to my stomach, sick to my stomach, because the information that I read in the book reminded me that I had been exposed or pre-exposed to the information that was written in the book three years prior three years before, right? I had all the, uh, before the crash where things was going wonderful, right? Um, and so I realized at that time I had been pre-exposed to some to this concept, but the people who shared it with me, they didn't give me all the information. They only gave me part of the information, but the part that they withheld or they didn't share 
for whatever reason, was the information that had I known my life in that moment could have been totally different because I would have made some different decisions. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that, being given partial information, not being given all of the information. And then, of course, you know, that causing you to make some, you know, not so good decisions. And so as a result of that, I got passionate about what I had read. I started sharing it with all of my family and friends. And the lady, you know, who I was referring people to, she was like, Javon, you know, you're really passionate about this. Why don't you uh, get your license and start helping people because you're really passionate about it. And so basically, to make the long story short, that's what I did. I got licensed as an insurance and retirement professional. And then as recent as uh, September of last year, I took and passed the rigorous securities investment law course and exam. And this is what I've been doing for the past 10 years or so, just really being a blessing and teaching people this concept of how to be the bank. And so I share all that with you to let you know that it's not just my formal training that qualifies me to share this information with you, but my personal life and experience that I've lived and taking this information now has allowed me to survive all of those things. And so now not only am I able to uh, sympathize with my, with my clients, I'm also able to empathize. And so as one of you talked about helping uh, business people, uh, uh, business entrepreneurs understand their life purpose and things like that, that's this, that experience was a part of my life's uh, uh, purpose and why I'm here today. And so a couple of things I want you guys to take away from what I'll share today is one, I want you to discover some solutions for business owners to help you to maintain and sustain your business and build your own retirement plan along the way without relying on the banks for funding. Okay, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we have is funding as entrepreneurs. I also want you to learn the four components that every plan should have so you're not concerned about when the market crash or a, a coronavirus hit or any type of unexpected emergency should arrive. Then I want you to learn how to create your own benefits package and private pension for yourself, okay? And then discover an alternative approach to create tax-free income, uh, flexibility to access your funds without penalties, and create a nest egg so that you can make investments along your way towards retirement as you use the infinite banking concept. And so just a quick disclaimer, I gotta let you guys know that uh, most of you, some of the information you'll hear tonight, some of it you have never even heard before. It may even challenge a lot of what you've been taught. And so I ask that you just accept this information in a general context and apply what fits your situation. This is not financial advice uh, because without individual knowledge of your individual situation, I have to make the information general, okay? And then also Catherine has asked me to leave time and uh, at the end to just kind of answer any questions that you have. And in fact, type in your questions as I'm going along so that you can remember and then Catherine will read them off to me and I'll answer them at the end. Okay, and so what have we been taught up to this point? Um, most of the things that we all have been taught is going to school, get a good job, you know, max out your 403 Bs, set IRAs, buy mortgages to uh, get a house, get a loan, and student loans to pay for college, pay whatever Uncle Sam tells us to pay in our taxes pay the maximum on our credit cards and pay that forever, you know, accept the less than 1% that the banks are paying and think that's normal. You know, these are some of the things that ride out the stock market, it will come back up. These are some of the things that we've been taught, we've kind of bought into over the years, retire after 30 or 40 years, right? But many of you, you guys are a little more ambitious than the average person. And so you decided that, hey, I'm going to start a business of some sort. Um, but however, I need you to understand that there's a reality and there are certain challenges that come along with that as well. Um, and some of those challenges are uh, accessing funding to expand your business as well. Um, uh, we see right now, as we even look at what's going on right now with this stimulus money, we see who, who are, who's getting those funds, right? It's usually not the small businesses who really need it, but the larger ones. Access to funding is limited. Access to benefits in the beginning stages. A lot of entrepreneurs, they don't have any benefits. 
uh, because one, there's not enough money coming in to pay for benefits, okay? Also having low cash reserves because we're constantly trying to, you know, the money we earn and we're pumping back into our business to keep our business going. Um, many times we lack strong credit that we're able to leverage just again, because we kind of just, you know, uh, uh, scraping up to keep the business going. And then a lot of business owners, as you notice, um, they don't have a solid retirement plan. They go 20, 30 years of hustling and grinding, but they really don't take the time to set up an exit strategy. Okay, were you trying to get my attention? Catherine, were you trying to get my attention? No, ma'am, but if everyone, I'll, let's, I'll take this moment just to ask if everyone can mute out their line if they're not muted, because when we hear the background noise, um, it, it, it intercedes on um, the presentation. So if you could just hit the mute button, please. Okay. And so, um, you know, having that strong retirement plan, that lack of succession planning, many business owners as well, they don't have a plan in place to say, okay, once I start working this business, who's going to, who am I going to turn the business over to? Who's going to step up and take my place? Um, and then again, just having that real exit strategy. Uh, we build these businesses not to do this forever, but to at some point to, you know, end up on the beaches of the world. And having a strategy to allow you to do that usually is a big lack or, 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 or something that many business owners miss. And so what I want to share with you guys is a way, a solution through the infinite banking concept that will provide a lot of solutions to many of these challenges. Um, when we start thinking about uh, building well for any type of plan, we always got to look at a foundation and make sure that we have the basics taken care of. And anytime you look at uh, building a financial empire, there it needs to be built off of a solid foundation. I use a pyramid in this example because a pyramid is a very strong and stable structure. It's been able to stand the test of time architecturally, and we, we believe the same concept works well when planning people's finances. And so your, your base, I don't have a lot of time to get into this. The first chapter of my book is going to break all of this down, but you want to build your foundation based off of, of adequate savings in place, pr appropriate protections in place and then long-term savings and then your speculative investments and things like that um that's the order a lot of times we want to kind of just jump up into starting businesses starting investing but we don't have the foundation laid out and so i want you to definitely take a moment to think about that and know and understand the four cornerstones that every strong financial foundation should have and that's a, a component that address growth a component that address safety so that again when we look at what just happened to us a month ago in the market you know we're not pulling our hair out because our accounts just lost 30 and 40 percent a component that deals with tax uh, advantages uh tax advantages for you so that your, the money that you do accumulate is not just going to be ate up from taxes and then again having a protection component in place to protect you from all the what ifs and that tends to come up in our lives that we don't typically expect and so I just want to kind of uh, give you some case studies of some people who, who understand and taking advantage of these type of systems that are out here to protect us from all of those challenges that I mentioned. In this case, I have Stephanie here. She was age 35. She started contributing to her infinite banking account, uh, just about $300 a month. That's what she could afford at the moment, you know, at the time she started. And then unfortunately, a few years, a few, a few years out, uh, Stephanie gets sick. And she's in a situation where she can't work for six months. And so what she does uh, at that point is she starts to collect $4,000 a month from her banking account, her infinite banking account to cover her expenses. And then a few years later, she needs some capital to keep her business going. So she borrows $20,000 from her plan and pays herself back over five years while still earning interest on that $20,000 that she borrowed. Stephanie's partner passed away. A lot of times this happens in business as well, um, but because they were smart, they own, her company owned one of these plans on the, on its key employees. And so her company was able to get 200,000, you know, to keep them going while she replaced her partner. And then at age 60, Stephanie finally decides to retire and she creates her own pension plan and draws $35,000 per year tax-free for the rest of her life. And so Stephanie is just like many of you. I heard 
heard a couple of you who have a 501c3. She had a 501c3, uh, a few employees, most 1099s, but she didn't really have a, a, a benefits plan for her business because she just didn't have enough capital or revenue to afford that. Okay, but but because she took advantage and, and started an infinite bank account, she was able to cover those times in her life where she needed some benefits to rely on one. Um, another example here is of a uh, Yolanda. She had twenty five thousand dollars in a savings account at the age of thirty. She decided to stop contributing to her four hundred one k, and instead she started to send five hundred dollars a month to her new infinite banking account. At age forty five, she elected to receive twenty thousand dollars a year tax free to send her daughter to college for four years. Then when she retired at age 65, she stopped making contributions and then she created her own pension by electing to receive $50,000 a year for the rest of her life, okay? And so this is how uh, business owners, these are the vehicles that business owners use, not relying on you know corporate America or a lot of the traditional uh, vehicles out here. They're creating their own pension plans so that they can make sure that they have a strong exit strategy. Then, assuming that that she lives, let's say she lived to 100, once she passed away, her family would get $1.5 million in assets to her family. Um, another thing that I outline in my book, I show you an example of how you utilize these type of plans to really be the bank. And this is this example, hi, hi. and even in my book, I use the I'm example of a person up. purchasing a car every five years. So instead of them uh, going to Toyota to get a uh, or Lexus Financial to get a, a loan, they go into their own account and they borrow uh, the money from their account and purchase their car and pay themselves back. In this example, a person had a $25,000 uh, auto loan paying four seventy-five dollars a month for 60 months. They would have paid a total of $28,000. Under the infinite banking system, they would have took the same $25,000, paid themselves back the same four seventy-one dollars over 58 months versus 60. Now, because their account is linked to the earnings and the growth of the S&P 500 index, they earn $15,000 on that money that they borrowed from themselves. So basically, that difference, it was a $16,000 difference to offset the cost of them purchasing their car. So in essence, they really only paid $9,000 for their car because they used their own money versus using the bank money. And so these are some of the strategies that the infinite banking account allows one to do. And thanks to the IRS, the infinite banking account is the only investment approved by Congress and the IRS to provide you all of these benefits and features. And so um, I'm just kind of running through it because I want to make sure I stay within my time. Um, this little known tax-free account, also known as the infinite banking, you don't have to pay taxes uh, on your growth or principal ever. You earn 30 to 40 more times interest than having your money sitting in a regular bank. Your interest rate is guaranteed. Um, so no matter, uh, your money will grow the same yearly rate, no matter if the market crashes and your money is liquid. So now when it's time to, for a need for uh, uh, business operating expenses or buying a cars or whatever it is, you can access your money and do the things that you need to do. And your money is not, you're not required to report any earnings to the IRS because they don't classify the income that grows in these plans as income, okay? So it's none of Uncle Sam's business. And so some of you are, you know, pretty sharp people out there, you're probably saying, well, how come I've never heard about this? And it's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, most financial advisors, they don't even really know an account like this exists, to be honest with you, nor do they know how to properly set it up to be totally tax-free to the account holder. And then two, most financial advisors only recommend financial vehicles that the company they've contracted with tells them to recommend or vehicles that where they make the most compensation. And so that's why most people don't know. But then as a result of us not really knowing about that, that's why less than 0.7% of Americans have what we call the infinite banking account, while more than half of the population own the taxable 401ks or SEP IRAs and things like that. And then those who do own these accounts, they fall into the categories of the richest 10% of, of, of net worth 
people in the world. They, they're the ones who get access to this information. They're the ones who use this and they own over 55% of these plans. And some of those type of people are people like Walt Disney, JC Penney, Ray Kroc. You all have heard of many of these people. The Roth, Rothschild, these people have publicly talked about how Walt Disney, they were on the verge of losing everything. He went to his account like this and his account, the money in his account is what saved Walt Disney from folding, you know, years ago. And so if you really want to be wealthy and rich, we have to do what the rich and wealthy do as well. And so once again, once that, once that money is capitalized, you start to make that money to start working for you. And that's where, you know, for those of you who are building your new businesses, you will be able to use your money in the event of these type of situations we're in now. Uh, some of people are struggling now because they don't have any cash reserve. They don't have any pools of money to rely on. So now they can use their accounts to buy equipment for their business, lines of credit for funding, Funding, start investing in real estate and establish reserves for payrolls and all of those different things that we typically need money for. So I say all that to say, some of you might be thinking, you know, is this a good option for me? To be totally honest with you, I don't know. It totally depends on your individual situation. And so what I am willing to do, uh, because I didn't have a lot of time to really break this down and go into it, I will offer a two-part coaching and strategy session uh, for any of you who are interested in learning more about this concept and if it will be a viable strategy for you. Uh, the first part of that uh, uh, strategy session will be an analysis of your financial pyramid and your goals. And then the second part will be, I'll determine if this is a good fit for you. I'll pro provide you a plan, make any recommendations, and then a strategy on how you can implement something like this. And so um, uh, uh, the first step will be, again, just gathering the information, meet analyzing what you currently have going on and what you're looking to do and then make some recommendation. And so typically um, the, a consultation with me is $250 uh, because we're in the climate that we're in and I really like uh, Catherine and I know the people that she's, if she's connected to you, I know that you're serious about this information or about anything. And so I told her that I would offer um, this type of session that usually people pay $250 for just $39, and that will include the book and the workbook uh, companion to go with it. And then I'll host the, um, the strategy session with you. Um, and if you're interested in that, you just simply go here to this site here, booksession.javonwalker. Catherine, if you can type that into the chat for me, that would be great. Um, and then you can go there uh, and book your session. If you're not interested in a session, but you are interested in getting my books, you can go to youbethebankbooks.com and purchase the books there. $25 for both of the books and um, you can get the information that way. Um, and as I promised you guys, the first chapter free of my book for free, um, which is everything that we talked about in greater detail for your understanding, you can get that at this link here, javonwalker.net forward slash free chapter. And you go there and you will be able to immediately download the first chapter of my book. And then lastly, my firm is called Affordable Benefit Solution. We're a full service financial solution firm, and we focus on retirement planning, learning the concepts of tax-free retirement and being your own banker, rollovers, hours. There's a lot of discussions. People right now are talking all over the place about what they think they should be doing with their retirement accounts. And guys, definitely you want to get some help before you make any type of decisions in that area. Estate planning, insurance services, uh, credit and debt elimination. These are all areas that we pretty much help people. And so that is my all I have. Uh, if we have some time for questions, I know I went over just a little bit, Catherine, but at this time, I will open up the floor to allow anybody to have some questions. My goal was to try to get as much information I could in the time that I could, and hopefully you guys found value in that, found value in that information. So at this time, we're going to open up for a Q&A. We want to make sure um, there, if there's any questions on the table um, that you have an opportunity to ask it. You can unmute yourself at this time. Yes, how you doing today? I'm good. good. How are you? I'm outstanding. Uh, sorry I'm late. I didn't catch the beginning of it. Uh, but Ms. Giovanna, that was great information, I think, that you gave. Uh, just a few questions in reference to what you 
what you do. Okay. Uh, you said that uh, the interest was guaranteed interest. What is the interest rate at that point based off the index? Great question. It's, what's your name? My name is Sir Rob. I am the connector. All right, Sir Rob. Is it Sir Rob? Yeah, S I R. R O B. Okay, so Rob, thank you. Great question. So typically, these plans, on average, over the past thirty years, they've earned anywhere from eight to ten percent uh, from the index earnings. Um, there is some guaranteed rates of about three or four percent. The plans vary uh, based off of the um, the carriers who offer these plans. So on average, these they've earned about eight to ten percent over the past thirty years. Over the past 30 years. So close in, it's normally between 8 and 10% interest on close in, no matter what's the amount. When you say close in, what do you I'm mean? I'm sorry, close in, end of year. I should say end of year. Is the based yes. off end of year consumption. Okay, yes, great. That's an annual return, yes. That's an annual return of 8 to 10%. Okay, okay. Uh, if anybody don't have any questions, I have a few more questions. If somebody else want to ask a question, then, you know, feel free. Um, now, you said that you gave a hypothetical, you gave us a case study. Mm -hmm. Somebody invested $500 per month mm -hmm. for duration. How many years was that? Or how long did that last? Um, in this particular example, let's see. Typically, these, plan, these plans, they, people contribute to them contribute to them for a minimum of 10 years so some ten year people, period. yeah 10 year is the minimum so but i think in the example that i gave that was over about a 30 that was over about a 20 to 30 year uh time period that one of those examples that i actually gave um yolanda yeah because she started it at age 30 and then she retired at age 65 so that was about a 25 year period okay uh based off that information right there what was her initial in investment start upon her enrolling in the program? What was her contribute every month? That's one part. And the second part, what was her face amount on that, that uh, policy? Um, so she had, she started it with a $25,000 lump sum in there. Um, let me see, did I put in here what she was contributing? Uh, $500 a month. And she paid a total of two hundred and forty thousand into the plan. And so, when after she calculated everything, she took out from the college money to the uh, retirement. She took out about one point eight million. That's based on compound interest over the thirty year span. Yes, sir. Of oh, the thirty year span of compound interest. Okay, eight yes. percent. Okay. Okay. One more question, if if you don't mind, that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, based off the balance of the policy, because uh, I'm Catherine has some other things to do. <laughs> uh, should I move on, Miss Catherine? No, Is you, your show? You no, you can complete your question. Okay, based off the balance of the policies, uh, I guess you're dealing with with the insurance policy. You have a cash value side, and you have a face amount. Mm -hmm. at, at, at the cap off of ten years of that policy. What does normally the cash value side equal? Is it equal the amount of the face amount or what? Yes. Well, no, not the face amount. No. And every plan is different. These are not cookie cutter plans. It depends on what's being contributed in the plan. It depends on the person's age, the time they started it, how long. So it's, I can't give you any type of like specific or um, precise numbers because they're all customized to people's individual circumstances and situations. Um, but the cash value does grow along with them every single year and it compounds. And so that's how basically people are able to utilize these plans to uh, purchase things along the way because they're able to borrow against those plans and use them for the, their own needs. Okay, so I'm, I'm just referring to the typical one that you just gave, the, the case study you gave about the 25000 The initial investment was 25000 and the uh -huh. face amount was what? What was the face amount? So 25000 as well? No, 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 no way. The face amount, I'm not sure what the face amount was because we don't really focus on that. We focus on the cash accumulation. That's what that's what we focus right, on. Right, cash accumulation. Bank. Yeah, so as I mentioned here in this example, she was able, she put in 240000 but she took out $1.8 So that's considered the growth that she made off of her plan. Okay. And then All if right. she was to live, if she lived until she was 100, um, her family would still get a, a death 
a payout of one point five million. Okay. Uh, you would well, have to be ask... like a little more mechanics, like of you know some specific uh, illustrations. We can definitely do that one on one, and I can kind of really show you a little more mechanicals based off of your individual situation and show you the correlations between the the money that builds up in the plan versus what's uh, uh, how the plan grows and things like that. Okay, that's great. I mean, it's, it's great. Thank you for information. I don't want to ask you too many questions. Uh, I'm going to move on let somebody else ask the question uh, because I know time is limited. So I'm going to move forward. If anybody else don't have any questions, then I come back. If somebody else has any questions, then I move forward from there, okay? Well, Thank I'm you for the information, Ms. Joe. My pleasure. But we can get, because I don't want to dominate, because I know Catherine has some other things she want to share. But um, I may provide my contact information here, and we can certainly get as many questions you want to get answered, we can set up a time and we can do that for you um, on our time and we won't take up the time of the um, the mixer. Right. No okay, worries. Great, but great. I want to I want to definitely open it up. It may be someone else that has a question. I don't you know want to cut that off uh, if someone else okay. had a question. Okay. I just want to be mindful. Yes. Yes. Did anyone else have a question? No. <laughs> Mr. Connect, you pop back up. Look, let me let, let me um, allow you, if no one else has a question, just one more question and then we're going to move on, okay? No, no, no. Go ahead. We can move on because it's your show, Miss Kathy. I'm good. No, I'm actually, good. It's, it's, it's our show. I always like to say our. Um, okay, where it's our saying, show? Where? We, let me clarify because I know there are a lot of platforms and the person that's organizing it, they're really kind of stuck on them. I'm a great organizer. That's my love. That's my passion. But when we all come together, I see it as, as a collaboration tonight because we're all leaders in our own right. I'm just kind of trying to, you know, make sure set the pace, set the energy, set the vibe for the mixer. But I still want everyone to feel that this is a part of them as well. So um, I'm going to give it one more call. Anybody got any questions? And then Mr. Connect, I will. If you do have one more, we're going to allow you to um, share or, or put your question out there. No, 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 no. I'm good. I mean, Mrs. Joanne, uh, yeah, we're going uh, we, we to have, we gonna have a, a off the air conversation and reference okay. uh, the information that I'm trying to get from her. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, um, guys, this has been a phenomenal. I just wanted to share those of you that was a part of last week. I shared some of the laws in the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John C. Maxwell. And I wanted to <laughs> share three more of the laws out of the book. Law number 17 says, the law of priorities. It says leaders understand that activity is not necessarily an accomplishment. In other words, sometimes we can get busy just doing, get busy in the motion, but we're not busy with the particular strategic plan. And so one of the things that I'm encouraging everyone is we are knocking on May 1st. May 1st is this Friday. Let's look and monitor at our calendars. Let's look at our schedule. I mentioned it last week that we have to give our day an assignment. In other words, what are we doing that's actually leading to productivity, right? Um, this coming Friday, I'm working with a lot of individuals one-on-one -on -one that need strategy audits. Because of COVID-19, we know a lot of things have shifted in terms of A, how we build the business, but B, how do we build it past the right now? Because one of the things that many individuals have, you know, conversed or that I've even seen on the news with a lot of other entrepreneurs is that with everything that has happened with COVID-19 is like it happened out of the blue and many was not prepared for it. And so what I encourage everyone, let's take these next couple of days, look at your business plan. Several since last week reached out to me that have started working on their business plans and I've been able to give some feedback on that is what we have to do at this moment in time that's gonna make the difference May 1st, which is Friday. But then let's think past that time. Third quarter is right around the corner. That's knocking on the door. July is going to be third quarter. How do we prepare ourselves? Law number 18 says the, the law of sacrifice. It says a leader must give up to go up. And one of the things that I thought about that is we are all leaders on this line. As we're building our business model, what do we need to give up in this second or third quarter for our business to grow? What do we need to give up? I'm even looking at my line items of my personal budget and line items in my business budget. What needs to be eliminated and what do we need to do to redirect for the focus? Sometimes we just need to have a moment of redirection. And so I want us all to position our mindset of the law of the sacrifice. What do we need to give up so our business can grow? Then law number 19 says, the law of timing. 
It says when to lead is as important as what to do and where to go. I'm going to say that again. It says when to lead is as important as what to do and where to go. In other words, timing. What is the timing of your business? I was talking to a business colleague. Um, actually, for those of you that, that might have been on the beginning of the Zoom, last night, with a lady that's in Australia, Australia, and she's um, to totally different time zone. It was nighttime for me, daytime for her. We had an opportunity to talk. We met on LinkedIn. I'm saying this for a reason. Her and I agreed on, on one very important thing is that when it comes to business, timing is everything. What, what we have to do right now is reposition our mindset, pivot our business for the time we're in right now. So one of the things that I'm constantly hearing from some, um, not on this, on this line, but just in general in the business community is that because of COVID-19 is kind of, you know, knocking my business out the water or is messing with my growth. Here's the thing. We can't control what the government is doing. We know the governors, the mayors, and the senators are not even on the same page, okay? They're all saying different things. But what can we control as an entrepreneur? Can we even control the loans, the SBA, in terms of who they're giving? And I see that there's a... Um, uh, a, not protest, but there's a lot of conversation around, well, the big businesses shouldn't be getting the money, but here's what we need to put our mindset on. No matter what SBA is going to do, how do we need to position our business? Here's why I'm saying that, because I'm hearing on the news that there could potentially be a rebound in the fall time with COVID-19. If that occurs, what do we do to position our business or how should we prepare right now to prepare for the fall season? One of the things we have to do is look at technology. One of the things that I think is a gaping hole in, in many businesses, I even had to look at mine, so I put my hand up. What do I need to do to make sure my business is tech-proof? And that's a question we all have to ask ourselves. What do I need to do to make sure my business is tech-proof? No matter the season, no matter the situation. A couple of Tuesdays ago, I even mentioned, prior to COVID-19, put in your mindset, what was the foundation of your business? What was the nucleus of your business? Was it even stable before COVID-19? Because whatever stage your business was in, COVID-19 kind of just magnified it, right? And this is what I say when I'm talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. I, I try to be a straight shooter because when we talk about building business, we got to talk about meat and potatoes. How was the business before COVID-19? Was it even stable before COVID-19? And if the answer is no, it's okay, but we have to put in our mindset, what do we need to do now? So last week we did a seven day action call to, I call it a call to action, right? We're going to do it again for those that would like to share the call to action. My call to action was updating the website in media kit. That was my personal commitment to myself and my business. Everyone has shared their other personal commitments that they want to do. Uh, for those that would like to share their call to action and what they want to do for the next seven days, you're feel free to do so in, in a few minutes. Here's why I do it. It's not to put anyone on a spot, but it's about accountability. Not only accountability to you, but I have to be accountable as well. It doesn't matter that I'm leading up this group. If I'm not accountable to myself, I, I shouldn't even be a consultant for anyone. I have to be accountable as well. And we each have to be accountable to our own business. And so we just have to shift our level of thinking because if we don't give our day an assignment, if we're not specific about what we're doing every single day, guess what? The week is gonna get from us, the month will get away, the quarter will get away, and then we'll be on this platform come December, about to go into 2021, and what will our language be? What, what will our success story be, or the lack thereof? Well, we didn't get a chance to hit our goals because of X, Y, Z. We have to position our business in such of a way that no matter what the situation is going on, we have different streams of income. Same thing, you know how we say as an individual, we have to have different streams of income. It's the same thing with your business model. If you're a for-profit organization or a nonprofit organization, but if you're a nonprofit, a common question I've been getting is, can we fundraise in this season? And the answer is yes. What I've been sharing with people, you have to link your mission with what's going on in today's economy. And then you have to allow people to see how your program is relative in today's season in this very moment, in this very hour. And so same thing with the for-profit industry. I have a client of mine, he actually has a um, tech business where he actually works with entrepreneurs to create smart homes. And so his business is perfect for the right now, right? And so what we have to do is dissect everyone's business and say, what element of my company can meet the needs of my target audience? But I think a lot of times our businesses can uh, halt and kind of slow with growth because we haven't identified who our target audience is. A common thing that's often said among many entrepreneurs is that I do it all. 
I don't, and I'm not saying, I'm not knocking anyone that, that have multiple talents. I have multiple talents also, but I had to identify what is my area of strength. If anybody works with me, my focus is on strategic planning, organizational development. That's why I'm focusing on strategy audits, doing projections. What do we need to do? How do our business need to grow two years, three years, 10 years down the road? Then we double back and look at the core quarter that we're in right now. What are those fundamental things? It's called Mastering the Mundane. I was part of a marketing uh, class and it was talking about mastering the mundane. Until we master the mundane as an entrepreneur, our business is going to be on a slow pace of growth, right? So I, that's just the information that I wanted to share on tonight. I wanted to share three more laws out of the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And I just wanted to encourage, motivate, and inspire us all to think about what our strategy is going to be. We have a couple days till May 1st. A couple of days to May 1st. So I'm going to put out there my next seven-day goals. Um, once again, over the next seven days, my personal goal is to make connections with 10 other entrepreneurs, um, not only just in the States. I, in the past seven days, I've been able to connect with someone from New Zealand, Australia, Sierra Leone. Um, I'm intentional about expanding my borders. So over the next seven days, my goal is to make 10 more connections with entrepreneurs to develop a new partnership base. I also talked to someone in Tampa. We're going to be working together in a collaborative way. So that's my next seven-day goals. And every, anybody that would like to share, no force. But if you would like to share your next seven-day goal, feel free to do so. Are there any success stories since last week? Do we have any growth in our business since last week? Here's why I'm Catherine. saying this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, somebody wanted to speak? Yes, Catherine. This is Latasha. Uh, I didn't get to introduce my, uh, my business and everything at the beginning of the call, so I do apologize about that. <clears throat> However, um, my organization is called CHILD. It's an acronym, CHILD, Choosing to Help Individualize Develop. Uh, Child Champions Incorporated. What it is, is a Bible-based uh, youth mentoring program. So our main focus is to instill life principles, biblical principles into the lives of youth, or into the hearts of youth, uh, mm -hmm. in preparation for a successful life and a life that's going to uh, be heated to the word of God and to be able to listen to God, hear God when they, when they make decisions or when they choose their friends and things like that. So that's what this organization is, as well as offering one-on-one -on -one mentoring and uh, community engagement or community service. Um, so my thing is, for the next seven days, um, I am going to make a goal to uh, recruit at least three mentees. Now, I've spoken to at least at least 15 parents, got at least seven yeses, and maybe... Uh, submissions through the website all complete is just getting the kids and the families on the phone and uh, because of COVID-19 you know I can't go and be face to face with them so um, I'm trying to come up with creative ways that I can um, at least just try to get them on the phone so now my mind is thinking okay I'm gonna just uh, text the parents and let them know hey I have this activity I want your kid to be involved in uh, let them call me or what is a good time for me to call them uh, so mm -hmm. we can go ahead and get that started but that's my goal my seven day mm -hmm. goal is to uh, recruit at least, I would like five, but at least mm -hmm. three uh, uh, mentees. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great seven day goals. The reason why I encourage the seven day goals or what has been the success stories, because it's, it, it's, it's not for me, but it's for ourselves and our mindset to position. What do we need to do? Because I, again, I'm a straight shooter when it comes to business. Many times people say they want to have a business, but really it's a hobby. And I say that because if we're not intentional every day about building our business with key building blocks, if we're not intentional about it, if we're just, you know, casually building, it's a hobby. And guess what? It's okay if it's a hobby, but we got to understand the difference. Are we building a business or, are we, or do we have a hobby? Because if it's a business, there's a certain mindset and there's a certain level of work that has to go into building a business. So I'm just going to open it back up again if anybody want to share their next seven day goals. Yes, this is Latonya. Um, for I want to come up with a business name for um for my five hundred one uh, for my five hundred one C three business mm -hmm. for the next. Awesome. Time. 
that's absolutely wonderful you know and no in in everyone's goal will be different it doesn't matter about the size or how big it is it's just the fact that you got something that you're going to be focused on so that's wonderful wonderful did anyone join that wanted to share it or just introduce themselves that might have joined later on i see a james mccallister on. how you doing good how are you i'm good um I'm uh, I'm in I'm in conjunction with um with Brian Cooper uh, okay. as well as uh, my wife is Rochelle McAllister. Um, Brian Cooper and I have Charles Webb, and my my wife and I have single parent achievers. Awesome. the seven day goal. Uh, um, I'm going to start a church, and my wife and I are. In the next seven days, we need to choose the name of the church, mm. and so, awesome. so um, you you helped me even in that tonight. Um, I, I told my wife earlier today that I wanted to wait on to hear the voice of God, mm. but being intentional, and we actually have an intentional line. We have a, a shirt, a t-shirt line uh, called Intentional Living. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I appreciate uh, the fervency, the fire that you put up under me, uh, just in your comment uh, about the difference between a business and a hobby. And I was so intent on making sure I heard the voice of God. And so often we waiting on God and God is waiting on us. So, uh, so, uh, yeah. so I'll be choosing my name within uh, the church name within the next seven days. Thank That's you. powerful. And thank you for sharing. Absolutely powerful. Powerful. It is 8.05. I don't want to cut anyone. Else. Is there any other last minute announcements? Even if it's not about a seven day, maybe it's something coming up in your business. Maybe you're promoting the event. I want to give you an opportunity to share. All right. Excellent. Can yes, ma'am. I, I, I like I like to share just some uh, some success stories, as you know, as you alluded to, so many excellent points this evening. Um, I gotta say, you know, it's a blessing for me. My business is doing extremely well right now. It's doing better than it's been all year, right? Before COVID, all of that now. And and I have to, of course, give God the credit for it. But I postured myself starting last year with changing my mindset and how I view my life as being a kingdom dweller, a person who I believe in this point that I, yes, I am in this world, but a lot of the things that's happening, I'm not affected by it. And it's been reflecting in my business. I've made major investments. I mean, it's, it's funny to see James McAllister. He probably don't remember me, but I met him years ago through his wife's organization. And it's funny because she reached out to me trying to get me to talk on her thing. I haven't even had chance to really lock down to talk to her because I've really been that busy. And so phenomenal couple. I'm so excited for you guys, what you're doing. We met before you guys got married. Um, but again, just being in a position uh, 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 to set the intentions that you talked about, um, understanding, you know, where you belong and what place you should be in and, and having those expectations daily, speaking over your business during this time and the season, I promise you everything that we say out of our mouths, it's going to become our truth and our reality. So if we feel that we are affected by this going on, I don't even, even use the word um, uh I don't, I, don't even, I don't even feel comfortable saying Corona, to be quite honest with you, because I don't want to give it any more power, especially no power in my world, okay? But I said all of that to say that my business is doing extremely well right now. And again, it's because of my intentions. It's because of the investments I've made in my business. And personally, I'm not worrying about no, you know, I didn't even apply for no stimulus money. That was like, that was my, my, my husband, my brother-in-law was like, tell you want to apply. I'm like, apply for what? I don't need that. <laughs> you know, I'm good. <laughs> Thank God, but, but again, it's because of the preparation that you talked about, the intentions that many of us have already talked about as well, and just really put into action through the faith that's required to really walk this thing out. And so I'm really excited for all of the, the, the business owners on the line. I'm excited for you because you are you are nothing but a blessing. The, the experience and the information that you bring to people, love it straight core cut no cars no fluff no selling of any type of thing it's just straight 
information and strategy and that is what we need in this season strategy and processes that's what we should be focusing on strategy and processes because that's going to allow us to go to the next level no matter if we're in this climate a better climate or worse climate or whatever if we put the right systems in place then we will be able to weather any type of climate or storm that come our way so i'm gonna turn it back to you because i can keep going i'm just excited i just love absolutely everything absolutely I've heard <laughs> absolutely listen um and next week we got a team member that's on this line and he's he um he's on this line and we got a next up when i say next up next up for next week right uh now mr mayo is going to take the reins next week we're going to actually have a one-on-one -on, -one on thursday but um here's why i like to do it some people say why do you have other people on the platform you know why because I don't know it all. I believe iron sharpens iron, and I believe everybody can bring something to the table. So Mr. Mayo is going to be up next. We're going to shoot out that flyer, the topic, and all that good stuff, so be on the lookout. But we do have a hand raised. The connector, did you want to say something? Yes. Uh, how are you doing once again? Yes. Uh, great information. Uh, I am having an event meetup on Zoom this Friday talking about digitizing real estate property internationally. Mm -hmm. So if anybody want to tune in, just go to the uh, chat box, put your information, and I'll send you the information in reference to that. It's a free Absolutely event, so awesome. the information is free. So come and get it. And what time is it? It's at 8.30 p.m. our okay. time. Okay. Eastern. Awesome. Okay. You know, listen, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. I say phenomenal. I say awesome. I say good morning to the leader and you. It's nighttime. I know it's nighttime, but I say good morning to the leader and all of us because it's at the point of time when we awaken to the leader that's on the inside is when you have your leadership experience and it's when things shift in our mindset that we can take our business to the next level. We're going to be back here next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mr. Uh, Mayo is going to give a phenomenal uh, I don't say I don't say presentation and phenomenal information, uh, things that we can chew on. I like to say meat and potatoes. I never like fluff stuff. I want something I can chew on and that I can actually implement. And that's what we're going to always maintain these Tuesday nights to be. Um, for those that don't know my website, my website is www.catherinetrotter.com. You can go into the website, get information about who I am and individuals I've served over the years. With that being said, I'm going to see everybody at the top and we'll be back next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Signing off. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.